At this time, I'd like to call to order the caucus meeting for February 13th. Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Carey? Here. Mr. Post? Here. Mr. Bard? Here. Mrs. Labby? Here. Mr. Bellin? Here. Mr. Bonacci? Here. Mrs. Walker? Present. Do you want to do your presentation now? Or in the and do you want to talk about TIFs now, or do you want to talk about them at the council meeting? Do you mind waiting a half hour talking about the council meeting? Does anybody else want to talk about them now instead of on the council meeting? Because we're going to have a couple things on first reading tonight. Would you would you like to go now so you can leave earlier, or are you staying for council meeting? That's all. That, that was my only question. Just Trying to be respectful of your time. <laughs> we did discuss that earlier today, so I thought you said regular then, meeting. Whatever you guys want. I was just okay, so we don't have any presentations that I'm aware of. All right, items for discussion. Shannon, boards and commissions, you passed out a overview of uh, PowerPoint. Um, boards and commissions, we wanted to the the over uh, the, the goal or the idea was and we've talked about this for a couple years, is to correct the, uh, to do the things that, that Chuck talked about, is put some, you know, attendance rules and some things in there as well, but also, actually, I'm going to get steal your slender. You've got bullet points here. Why don't you just go through it? The idea is for these boards and commissions that uh, we want, and I thank you, Mark, that we want to uh, look at, you know, we talked about how do we make them better that we can get. We had some favorite park and rec says they don't they don't think that there's a lot of value in there. You know, how can we make these better? So let's go through this process over the next few months. The Jedi Commission, I think we needed to, to look at do to uh, work on that as as at first because we had a lot of people who were leaving and we're going to reappoint a new board and we need mm -hmm. to tell the new board what to do. Um, right. So, but uh, Shannon, why don't you start? Uh, well, it starts off, um, the proposed sections from Mr. Vizana and my conversation were um, to include with each section of the boards or commissions uh, topics such as establishment, um, membership terms, vacancies, compensation, powers and duties, and what constitutes a quorum. Um, so those seem to be the things that um, questions uh, on occasionally. Um, the establishment, uh, and Mr. Vanna, feel free to jump in, um, is just general, like if, it, if it's a charter-based or um, ordinance-based uh, membership will include, like uh, we've talked multiple times about, some, some committees have the word resident, some have uh, elector, some have elect, uh, qualified electors, some say inhabitant, so making that consistent across the board of qualified elector and also defining that. Um, and then how many members each board or commission has, uh, and if the appointments are ward specific or not. Does anybody feel there's anything else that needs to be included in membership? No, but I, I would just like to, I think, agree with you, Ms. Collins and Mr. Vizana. Um, I would like to see the definition of who serves on these terms to be, uh, I'm sorry, who serves on these boards and commissions to be consistent across all of them. I, unless there's a legal reason they should be different, in my opinion, they should probably all be qualified electors. And then to your point, that should be defined in the particular document that is laid out there. I would, I would just think that would that take a alleviate lot of a lot of issues. confusion. Yeah. Yep. And again, unless there's a reason why some of them should be different than that, I'm not aware of that. No, most often, let me just break for a second, um, most often, um, at least what I've seen is you'll see that councils you know, over decades will institute new boards, commissions, and you put them together for the needs of the day, and we don't take a look at how that consistency applies throughout the various boards and commissions. So I think a lot of the heart of the project that uh, Shan and I set out on here or, or kicking off is to have that consistency there so it's clear, there's no more is this the board where you can only have this person and it can't have that person and there needs to be one advisory group? We feel that it, you know, it, is a, it is an important and import, or an important project for getting you guys the efficiency that you need when you're making those appointments. You just say, here's a batch of people, this is who can serve on that, and we can appoint people to the best fits that they have. So a lot of this 
<laughs> at least from my take, is going through these various topics that Shannon's going to talk about here tonight and just reconciling it all together amongst our various boards and commissions and set up a model here. And then the rest of it, we can uh, dump into a, you know, a handbook for our board and commission members that need not be codified. So. Mm -hmm. That pretty much summarizes the rest of this. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and I will tell you that some Watch of the reasons it. we got out of You're whack. You're welcome. Shortest mass ever consolidated anything. She would have done it faster. See you later. <laughs> One of the reasons we got out of whack on these or inconsistent is, for instance, we had we need to add we want to put teens on the Park and Recs Commission. We had a senior file on the Park and Recs Commission. Then we didn't have teens. Then we didn't have seniors. Then we had wards. And we moved things around and we added people just because we had people that wanted to participate. In, and, and throughout the years, a little here, a little there, I think we're, we're, we're not consistent. So with that said, um, I guess council's feedback on whether it should be a qualified elector or does anybody have strong feelings on one way or another? It's, I think it should. It's always been qualified elector before. I don't want, I, I'm, I think that you, if you okay. want to serve, you need to be a qualified elector. I believe the definition of qualified elector is somebody that's eligible to vote and registered in the city of Twinsburg. Is that the definition that you have? Okay. So, is it eligible to or registered as? I think it's said and registered. And registered. I said I said and. I, okay. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm, because you could be eligible, but if you're not registered, you're not a qualified elector because you are not. You can't vote, mm -hmm. which is a qualified elector. And there are different categories of person. So then, perhaps we'd have to go back and make sure everybody was a qualified elector who's already on. We typically, do that. We just made a that. mistake on one. I think it's for the charter review that was that the one that was being questioned. But <coughs> when we were interviewing people, were they all asked if they were qualified? It, it is a question on the application process now if mm -hmm. they are registered to vote. Um, so that'll help with the process. Uh, it, now the process also includes, like I go in and I usually check to see if they're registered and verify mm -hmm. their address matches the address that is on their application mm -hmm. um, with the board to, of to determine that. But and and one thing we'll have to do with terms is especially the Jedi because we we have an high, entire board after three years is going to be turned over because we weren't smart enough to stagger the terms in the beginning uh -huh. and I don't care if it's one and two or two and three we need to stagger the terms so that we don't lose the whole board at one point or mm -hmm. the, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. I guess we'll talk about the other, before, yeah, under membership also, um, I think the gist I've gotten from a lot of the conversations we've had um, is basically no more than seven members on any board or commission. Some only have five if they're ward specific. Mm -hmm. Do we want to, to establish criteria for that? If it's a ward specific one, is it five, one from each ward? So, um, or do we allow at large? So we had. Capital improvements was ward specific until we couldn't get anybody from ward five or ward three, so we took the wards off. We probably should put the wards back in on the capital improvements so every ward gets a vote on how we spend the money. We do we still have wards on? Uh, we have wards for park and recs, but don't we have at large spots as well or additional seats? So currently, parks and rec. Let's see. Sorry, I'm still getting. Used to this. <laughs> Uh, Parks and Rec has uh, has yeah. seven, and like we haven't updated it as part of the process of having a senior member or a team member also that's on there. That. Um, that's so much but so the ones that are ward specific are BZA, districting, planning, Jetta, or sorry. Parks and Rec has one, planning has, and planning. Mm -hmm. I, 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 in in my perfect world, I would argue that all boards and commissions should be board specific and should have representation from all five boards. Okay, in a perfect world. In a perfect world, I understand that might not be possible, mm -hmm. but I think in, in terms of representing the entire city across those boards and commissions, yeah. that should be what we should I, strive for. Ideally, like really, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect world, but right. things are not. Perfect. That's why. Right. So here's the challenge: is when we can't find that ward four person to sit on the capital improvements board, 
you know, we're four and four. Go ahead. So I think I have a solution that I can't remember where I used it, but we can make that aspirational within the code. So you, we can charge ourselves as a council here tonight, or in the future rather, to strive to have a balance of appointees across the various wards, but not make it mandatory. Yeah. Because right now, we sometimes from time to time, the ebb and flow of how many people want to volunteer their time in any community makes it very difficult, as we all know, to staff the boards. The one idea that I have used before, and I wish I could remember what type of board or commission it was, I just said, I crafted language that said it's aspirational. Council shall strive to have a representation across all the wards in the city, but it is not mandatory. So that's one option. Except for the charter commissions, because I think that the BZA planning yeah, and ARB be, yeah. and, and maybe one other, because it got put in the charter, spells yeah, anything, out yeah. spells out that it's wards that is by wards. Yeah, you gener like in Ohio generally you're A, yeah, but charter says one way we can't obviously modify that. But your land use boards will have sometimes have board based uh, memberships. Okay. But I've, you know, just your other general Run of the mill miscellaneous purpose boards and commissions that the council has created. I don't see why we can't have aspirational language. So we aspire to have ward okay representation, okay. but it gives us the flexibility to stick somebody in if we can't find I'm somebody. Okay anybody? I, yeah, I, anybody? I, I, so I think that aspiration, the challenge that I foresee is if we have a couple commissions that have multiple residents from the same ward, if the next cycle comes up, there's new applicants plus the existing member. Do you kick where does it? Where do yes? Do we kick off somebody or you know, what? I guess what does aspirational mean? That would be up to the council. Okay. It means we do our best to have. We don't have somebody. to do it that way, but you know, I mean, you could always just as a part of your Mr. private Mr. conversations for appointment. You're going to enjoy boards and commissions. Decide that, that it, you know, yeah. it's an, that you're, is you're a going to like that part. One time, I think it's used as if someone is a good member of the board. I couldn't see saying we're going to take well, you off. But it's used when you can't find someone. Right. Okay, that's what it's, I would and, read that. And, and, and at the same time, every meeting's public. So, in every meeting of the, I mean, I have never been to a park or or environmental meet that public or extra people didn't didn't speak. So, I, I don't have an answer to your question. Okay. Or, but, but at being, I mean, you're working towards that goal. I think it's a separate issue whether we put, we, you know, I think that, that that's not exactly what we're looking at. There. Okay. Um, if nothing else, we'll move on to terms because I know we have a big agenda. Terms we kind of touched on already. Um, we will try to make those all staggered. Um, vacancies, uh, establishing a process for vacancies of who, the, if somebody steps down, who they must notify, and also um, the posting requirements. To I have a question on that one for Mr. Mazana. In the in the um, when we have a vacancy. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have to go back and we have to re-advertise. Do we have the ability legally to appoint somebody from somebody that had applied previously without going back and re-advertising? Previously, that same year, right? Not previously, I, years before. No, no, I understood. Yeah, understood. Same, yeah. Yeah. Well, like the, a civil no. service no. list. We do not. Yeah, the issue is not. not. Yeah, okay. the issue is the, okay. we have rules for how long we have to notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. This vacancy itself. So it's not about you know, whether or not. Okay. We apply. So we don't then. We cannot yeah. just slot in no. somebody that. We, uh, that was applied. actually part of one of the charter amendments, yeah. that, and that was the one that did not pass. It had some other language in there okay. that um, addressed the midterm some vacancy. Other things. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, we had tried to create a more efficient. Okay. Maybe next. Can, can I say something to the Parks and Rec Commission? Um, when I was on it for years and years and years, not as a council member, but just as a resident, um, I felt, and again, I have not been to a Parks and Rec meeting for years, so someone can help me out here. I'm going to one on the 22nd of February. Has, who went to the last one? When was the last time we had a Parks and Rec meeting? I, yeah. But I don't know if we had a quorum. Yes, we, we, have did. An, we, we did have a quorum? Yeah. And again, someone could correct me, but I know when I was there, it felt like every week, every week, every time we had a meeting, it was just listening to... Uh, at the time, TL and Derek just give a report of what we're doing. We all kind of went, sounds good. And and we were told as a non-voting body that we are recommend, you know, just a recommending body. Mm -hmm. um, but we were not given a budget. We were not given anything to work with. And it felt like for years, kind of a waste of my time. 
I, I felt that way too, which is why I left Parks and Rec in the first place. And at one point I was screaming, give us a job, give me something to do. Give, there's nothing we're doing. And that's when I said, they, I said, give me a fundraiser, we'll do a fundraiser. And that's when I did that dog park fundraiser years ago that, you know, but other than that, there was no, I feel like I got nothing out of it. So I don't know what it is today, but I don't know if there is more teeth to it now. And if there is, that's great. couple slides we get to the duties and powers. Okay. You know what I'm saying though? That no, yeah, that's If there's no it. more teeth, why do we have that's, it? That's what we're, that was my, part okay. of this. Yeah. Part of this. So, um, so vacancies, about. we'll address compensation with some general language in there referring to the salary ordinance, then to Mr. Post's point on the powers and duties. Um, an email was sent to uh, the staff member that uh, works with the board and commission and the council reps um, to kind of give some, ask for some feedback on what they think the boards and different yeah. boards and commissions can do. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some feedback on those and we're still waiting on some others. But if you have ideas or recommendations, please feel free to share them and we can incorporate those. But um, and then so we'll outline those in there and then also determine whether they are, like you said, a decision making body or a recommending body. I, I agree with you on the park and recs, but I, there was a time when it was a very active, in, influential group and kind of got morphed in. Again, meetings just morph right. without without the guidelines. And There was a lot of attendance problems this past year. I also the think that they used to have a budget, if I'm not mistaken. Never. Never? Nope. I thought they were in a budget at one point. But, 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 so what I was told so none of our boards and commissions get have, have gotten budgets, but we can allocate money for activities or do I mean so typically right now you're right um, there are like environmental has a small budget that okay. but it comes it's not a specific budget item it usually just comes out of the public works mm -hmm. department for like the shred day and such and I know Jedi comes out of HR and Jedi comes mm -hmm. out of HR mm -hmm. so parks would naturally I think if they had an idea or a recommendation talk with right. Jen and see or I mean council but, would council would always you know, uh, just make I uh, with legislation we can allocate funds to an event. So, say somebody figured out something that was worthwhile and they needed ten thousand dollars, we could do that. In fact, we we had to do. I believe we did legislation for the Jedi uh, contract, or, or maybe not. I think it's only it was only six or eight grand. Maybe we just did that through the mayor being signed. But we we've spent money, um, but it comes from the department that's over the group in the past. I'm so just saying as long as we're talking about eliminating, if there's a group that doesn't have a, a, a real function or whatever, it's just something to think about as we move forward. That's all. Yeah. I'm done. all right. So we do have three budget line items in general government that are community events. Um, Jen Bettinson usually runs all of those programs mm -hmm. and they're for different um, parks and recs events. Um, but you know, if we're talking about the Parks and Rec Board, I mean that would be something that would fall under that. I would like to see how active the Friends of Twinsburg Park was because Hudson's is vibrant and they were the model. And we had Deb Peltz doing a lot of work and they raised a little bit of money and you know, did some things with the baseball fields. But I don't know that that's still an active entity. Um, and the idea was to fund and drive that so that you can get more people and you get a volunteer group instead of, but right. I think we need to gauge that right now. Okay. Is that fair? Okay. Go ahead. Last thing we have for the code section is uh, defining quorum for what each, uh, a quorum for each board or commission, because we get that question a lot, um, especially with our attendance issues we've had in the past, uh, if the people can hold a meeting or not. So we'll define that in each section. Anything that was not talked about previously, um, as Matt talked about, we are working on a Boards and Commission handbook where a lot of that other stuff can be addressed, um, such as the, the best practices for Robert's rule, sample motions to um, assist the Boards and Commission members with uh, moving the meetings along and also an attendance policy along with other items. I'm sorry. Oh, thanks. That's it? No. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Is there any other discussion on boards and commissions? All right. So we're going to go into uh, audits participation. There is none. Okay. Resolution 02-2024 is a CRA for Woodmont land. This is on its first reading. Uh, this is this will be read three times. 
we can go over it in more depth as it gets closer if anybody has any questions. But there's really, it's all spelled out. It's 3.5 million for a new project, 25 uh, full-time jobs. Um, you know, they're going to have a payroll of 700,000. It's 25% for five years. In the scheme of CRAs, that's low. Um, any questions? Resolution 04 2024 is a resolution to authorize the internet auction. Um, and this will will vote on this tonight. So this is the internet auction. Does anybody got questions on, on on the internet auction that we've read three twice already? Okay. Resolution 09 is a resolution to update the city's internet connections for all city buildings so we can get fast Wi-Fi. And let's see. And this is the second reading tonight, so we won't vote on this until next week, or two weeks from now, or the first meeting in, um, second meeting in February. Resolution 10, 2024, is a resolution to allow ODOT to perform deck sealing over the bridge at Tinker's Creek in Route 91. This is on the second reading uh, tonight. Amy, do you have anything you want to tell us about this? We're good. Ordinance... Uh, 12, 2024 is an ordinance to award the road program 1.627 uh, million. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put this on an emergency and pass it. It's gone through capital improvements. It's in the budget. There really aren't any surprises. This is a done deal. Anybody got questions? Okay. Ordinance 13, 2024 is an ordinance to award the Glen Willow Drive Waterline Project for $585,000. Um, you need this on emergency? Oh, this is on emergency. The reason for the suspension. Okay, so this is an emergency. I apologize. I just, it didn't say emergency really big. <laughs> All good. Ordinance to accept the right of way and sidewalk donation of a property on Route 82. Uh, this will be uh, a uniform widening of Route 82. This was approved by the Planning Commission at their meeting. I believe we are not voting on this tonight. Uh, ordinance 15, 2024 is an ordinance to memorialize the city's policy for ADA uh, transportation. It's on the first reading tonight. Ordinance 16, 2020. 16 through 19. 16 through 19. Oh, the tip one. I apologize. All right. They're the tips, but these are not. These are these tips do not touch the schools. We will have a presentation later this evening no. during the council meeting to talk about that. We're not voting on these tonight. We are going to have three meetings. What are we doing? No, they are three readings. We'll pass them on the third and final as an emergency. It's fine, but we're not doing it tonight. Not passing them tonight. No. I understand. So it's the first reading. Okay. Uh, ordinance 2024, ordinance is amend the policy regarding handling of contract for capital improvement for projects in excess of $50,000. And uh, Mr. Van, Zan Van Zana, are you going to, this mirrors the state now, correct? Correct. Thank no. you. So we had a lower level in the city of Twinsburg, now we're going to the state level. I think we went from 25 to 50 to 75. We wanted to see bids at 50. We're going to 75. First reading is going to be around for a month. Ordinance 21 2004 establishes temporary moratorium on filing or issuing permits for recreational marijuana, which lasts 12 months. We're going to put this on emergency because we don't exactly know how to deal with this yet, and we can hold off for a year to figure it out. Is that how you see this? That's correct. I just want to make one thing clear for the record. It's not saying yes or no. It's just saying we're going to figure it marijuana. out. It, one of the uh, issues that I don't think is talked about too much uh, in, in the wake of uh, the initiative passing is that the uh, statutory language that passed the, the Ohio voters calls for the state of Ohio to implement a system for regulating or licensing mm -hmm. recreational marijuana. That hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. So the city, you know, believes that's one very strong reason to have a moratorium right now because we don't know exactly how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. To keep in mind everyone that Twinsburg is a referendum zoning community so we would have to study the issue 
within our planning and zoning framework to determine whether or not we would like to propose uh, a use change to ballot that would have to happen in sure. November. So there's there's at least two moving pieces there that I believe are important for us to study. Sure. And then we also we're reviewing our zoning code right now to go on the ballot in November. So th this could or could not become a part of that ballot initiative as well. So one of the things that I advise uh, the mayor to you know present to you tonight was a moratorium that. It's temporary. It could be uh, you could pull it back anytime you want uh, after it's enacted, should you, should you so choose. And I believe it just draws a nice, neat line in the sand. Uh, so if an individual tries to show up tomorrow to pull a permit, it's claiming that they have a right to do X, Y, and Z. We've made it clear to our residents and our potential commercial operators that we're not saying yes or no right now. We're saying just wait a little bit. We need some time to see how it actually rolls out. Is and it an industrial use? Is it yeah. a commercial use? Mm -hmm. Does that Correct. board vote to change that use? Um, yeah, there's a lot of unanswered lot of questions at this point, and yep. we aim to bring you back answers so okay. you can make smart decisions uh, about the future of the city that relates to this issue. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ordinance 22, 2024. This ordinance is to amend Chapter 1197 of the Planning and Zoning Code along with Chapters 1305. 1323, 1325, and 1341. Uh, there will be a public hearing scheduled in March on the 26th. So that would be our fourth reading. Is that correct? Where am I at? That's that is correct. correct. Okay. All right. So this is going to be around for two months. Um, and the last one on our list today is a resolution 23, 2024, is a resolution to purchase. A tea mower for the golf course for the amount of fifty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. I'm sure this was on the capital improvements, and they're asking for an emergency so we can cut the grass quickly when he gets it stopped snowing. Because people are playing this weekend, we need to cut the grass. All right, that's a again, that's a quick run through on legislation. Um, is there any miscellaneous or items that somebody would like to discuss? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then, does anybody need a break? I'm okay. Okay. I'm going to. I'm at this time. I'd like to adjourn the uh, caucus meeting at seven twenty-nine.